Hello and welcome back to my second session all about how to revise for your upcoming 2022 biology exams. So yesterday we already discussed the topics that are going to be coming up on the exams and I just want to welcome you back. If you haven't watched that video I recommend you go back and watch it as soon as possible so you know exactly what it is that you're revising. As I said, yesterday we discussed the topics that are coming up in 2022 because this is different this year. It is not the same as normal. Now, what this means is that you have less to revise, which is brilliant news for, for everyone. And it means that you can really focus your revision on what you need to do this year to get the best grade possible. Now, we did talk about the topics. We talked about why they've changed. And we also talked about why it's really important for you to have that information to ensure that you get success. In today's session, what I'd like to do is discuss different resources that you can use to help you with your revision. This includes online resources, books, and different tutoring options. So I'm gonna start off with online resources. Now, online resources can include your exam board website, which has got so much information, I'll talk more about it in a moment. Different interactive websites that you can use where you can test yourself, which is a great thing to do to practice your skills. And also places that you can download revision resources. If you're more old school, you like to print things off and write them down, then this is a great option for you. So the exam board website is a really, really useful place to have a look for different information. You've got not only past papers on there, you have the exam specification. Now, this is a crucial document that runs through everything that could be on your exam. Now, bearing in mind that you're using those lists that I talked about yesterday, which I have here, okay, that means that you can go to this section. So if you're revising for paper one biology, you would go to the section about um, cell division. And it does actually have the code next to it. Oh, here we go, if I can show you. So it says here that cell division is 4.1.2. So you could find that in the specification and revise just that section for that topic. And then you can do the same for the next one. So the next one is part of B2. So you would go to 4.2.2 and you could find the information that you need. So that's a really useful way of narrowing down what you're revising to make sure it's just the information that you actually need. So beyond past papers, beyond the exam specification, there's also lots of really useful information all about the key vocabulary, the math skills involved. There is so much available on those websites. So I would really recommend that you go on there, you take a really good look around, dig around in the teaching resources and have a look at how it can help you. Because if you could understand the language of the exam paper, you are putting yourself in a far better position to actually having success in that exam. <clears throat> okay, so in terms of interactive resources, there are lots of really good ones available to you these days. Because of COVID, lots of different websites sort of sprung up in the pandemic to help with online learning, and a lot of them have stuck around. So that's been really useful for us as teachers and students to go and use those websites. Now, some of the ones here were already in existence beforehand, so these are just my favourites. There are lots more. This is not a complete list. This is just the ones that I go to the most. You've got Seneca Learning, which is great. It's free to sign up as a student and as a teacher. And you can go on there and take a look at your specific um, specification. So you can select the course that you're currently doing, whether it's Trilogy, Triple, whatever it is. And then you can actually add that course to your account. And then you can go through and test yourself on those different topics. And it's great because it gives you feedback as well. So on which, what you're getting wrong and what you're getting right. So you can focus your revision even more. Another great website is BBC Bite Size. I love BBC Bite Size because it has the really condensed information that you need and it has quizzes and videos and lots of diagrams and I just think it's a brilliant resource to use so I highly recommend it, having a look on there. Now another great resource is Quizlet. So Quizlet is like a flashcard website where people have already gone on and made flashcards, but you can make a set yourself and it suggests the different de uh, definitions. But if I were you as a student, I'd probably go and find a set that's already been made. And what you can do is you can save sets of flashcards that you want to use and you can test yourself in different ways. You can test your spelling, you can test your knowledge of the definition, you can do quizzes on there. It's a really, really good way of revising to make sure you are comfortable with your key vocabulary. And then one which is one I've discovered recently is called educationquizzes.com. 
Again, it's split by year group, so you can do QCE three GCSE. You can go onto the GCSE section, look for science. Most of it seemed to be AQA, as far as I could tell. And you can go through, pick a topic, and it has about 10 or so questions on each topic, and it tells you if you're correct or not. So you can repeat it and repeat it until you get them all correct. So another good way of just doing quick revision that's short and snappy, and it is a bit more engaging than just sort of trying to read out of a book. <clears throat> so the next one that I was going to talk about was downloadable revision resources. There are websites like test.com, which is aimed at teachers, but there's lots of great resources on there for students as well. If you prefer to print something off like a mind map to revise from, you can search for the topic that you want to revise, organize your search by lowest price, and then you will find all the free resources. And then as if you make an account for free, you can download as many as you want for free and print them off and use them at home. Um, teachers Pay Teachers is the same sort of thing. So they also have resources that for free if you sort it by cost. However, it is not as strongly aligned to the GCSE curriculum. So just make sure that you're revising the correct content there because you don't want to be wasting time revising things that aren't going to be in your exam. It is an American website, so I'd just be kept mindful of that. Um, another great one is the collins.co.uk website. It's a book um, company, but they do provide free exam papers for you to download and have a go at, which is a great resource to do. I, I often say the best revision is past papers, just past papers, practicing exam questions over and over because that's what you're going to be facing on the day, so you might as well get used to it. Okay then, so next is probably my favourite, books, and I'm going to talk to you about different books that you can use. I have some with me. Now, oftentimes you'll get given a revision guide in school. Um, you might have bought one from school or they might have given you one. Now, they are handy because they do have the information condensed for you, but they are not a complete package. There's so much more available to you. So, for instance, what I've got here is the complete course guide for GCSE Combined Science Biology for the AQA specification. And what's quite nice is that it goes through everything in the course in this book. It's quite a big book for one topic, for one subject, um, but it's really quite useful. So it has information in here about the required practicals. It has practice questions. It has key vocabulary. It has just all sorts. It goes through basically each page of these purple boxes will be some exam questions at the end of each chapter there's exam questions and also what's quite good is that it splits it into higher and foundation so i'm going to see if i can find an example um and what's also quite nice is that it tells you if there are math skills involved and how to work those out so if you look here i'm not sure if you can see it very well but it does say that this is higher. So if you're doing foundation, you can just ignore that. So you don't need to do it, which is quite useful that it's split up that way. So course books are useful. Workbooks are similar to revision guides, but they are more, much more question based. So there's not as much information. It's mostly just questions. Usually the answers are in the back as well. And then required practical lab books are really quite useful as well. So here's the biology one. And it goes through all the different required practicals for the biology course. And so say if I go on to pick a random one here, so this one actually does come up for both foundation and higher this year, it's the photosynthesis practical. So what you've got is an outline of what the practical is about, the learning outcomes that are expected of you from this practical, math skills that are required as well, so it goes through the math skills, it does have as well the different apparatus or equipment that you'll need to use. It has safety notes, so that's you might get questioned on safety in the exams, so that's useful to know. And then you've got um, different common mistakes that students can make. So good to go through that to make sure you don't make those same mistakes. If you go over them onto the next page, it covers the method, which is really useful. And it has a picture of how the apparatus is set up here, so you can see what that looks like. And then it has somewhere to record results. And then on the following page, it has lots of questions for you to practice and check your understanding. So really, really quite useful. You've got to remember, these are gonna be heavily examined this year, I think. The ones that have been chosen 
are definitely going to be in there. You might need to recall the whole method. You might need to analyze some data. You might need to do a um, complete a graph, talk about trends in the data, what's going on. So all really, really useful stuff. Now, as much as books are amazing, they can be very expensive. So where can you get your books from? Obviously, you can go straight to the publisher. So like this is Collins. So you could, oh, there we go, Collins. So you could go to the website and download, uh, sorry, order it straight from the website. This is CGP. Again, you could go and order it straight from CGP themselves. Or you could go to a bookshop like Waterstones. The works have these as well. Some of them, not all of them. Um, you can go to places like Amazon as well to order them, but you also have lots of options for secondhand books on Amazon, on eBay, on World of Books, Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree. You'll pick them up a lot cheaper in those places. So I would recommend having a look there first, because at the end of the day, your exams are in a few weeks. You're not going to be using these books for a long time. If you do get them um, brand new, I recommend selling them afterwards because you can make some money back because they are always useful. Now, my last thing I wanted to talk about today was tutoring options. So obviously you can pay for a tutor if you want to. You can have in-person tutoring face to face, or if you want to, you can get online tutoring. So there's loads and loads of websites offering online tutoring this year. It's huge. There are places like OutSchool. There's so many more on the National Tutoring Program with the government. There is just so much. <laughs> if you go onto Facebook, there are groups and groups and groups of people sharing their tutoring services. So if you want one-on-one -on -one support, even if it's online on Zoom, I would recommend going for that option. If, however, you don't really have the funds to afford one-on-one -on -one, um, revision tutoring because it can be very expensive, you can find lots of free opportunities online. Social media is a great resource for this. You've got YouTube with loads of tutorials on different um topics that you can go and watch for free there are podcasts that people are doing where they're just going through the different topics so you could go and you could listen to those while you're advising there are even small videos on instagram and tiktok and things that you could watch um if you're just scrolling through you might as well learn something while you go and uh, so there's lots of different things like that okay so i would keep an eye out for those if i were you online because there's so much great stuff out there Okay then, now I will be uploading this onto YouTube, so if you have any questions, please put them up there for me. I will put different links into the description that I have used today, like Seneca Learning and different places for books and things like that. So you can go and check those out and join me in the next session where we're going to be going through how to revise. So we've discussed what we need to revise, what resources we have available to us for revision, and then now we're going to go and actually do how to revise how to set up a revision timetable to make the most of our time. So I hope you'll join me again for that video and I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.